All right, guys, this is going to be my review for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre technical test that I got a key for like last week sometime. And I'm not really a fan of the asymmetric horror thing like Dead by Daylight. Um, so this review will be kind of like from the voice of those who are curious to see if this could pull you into the genre. Also, this video is not sponsored and contains zero shilling. So let's go. From the moment that the lights come on with this test, it's clear to me that developers Sumo Nottingham and publisher Gun Interactive really love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1976, and I knew I would do everyone a disservice if I didn't re-watch the movie before playing, so I did my homework on this one. I watched the movie, that was, that was the homework. I wanted to make sure I got all of the nods and winks to the movie and how authentically the license was being used here. The intro Star Wars style scrolling text is the first box tick of, oh I remember that from the movie, everything from the analog style filter replicating the look of an old VHS tape to the ominous voiceover recorded deliberately to sound from its era. The events surrounding Maria's disappearance would be just one of the many bizarre crimes later known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You're then greeted to some tutorial videos and the choice of playing the victims or the family. This game is a team-based asymmetrical 3v4 horror. Yes, I know what you're thinking, so dead by daylight then. And you're pretty much bang on, it does share a lot with Dead by Daylight while attempting to carve its own niche out in the genre. The main difference here, singular movie license aside, is the idea of having a team of killers instead of just one. This alone ups the ante and creates both extremely tense moments and also some frustrating ones, which we'll get to in just a little bit. The idea of the game is simple enough. One team plays as four survivors trying to make their way out of the basement and out of the house to run for their lives, while the other team is comprised of the three killer family members who have to hunt them down and kill them before they escape. Let's start with the victims. We were assigned with one of the victims who each have their set of strengths, weaknesses and unique abilities. When playing as these guys, you always start in the basement section of the map hung upside down like a human heavy bag. Badly beaten and tortured, you've suffered wounds that continuously bleed throughout your attempt of escaping. This blood can be tracked by the killers and so you'll always need to be on the move. Health items slow the bleeding, but it's a bit like trying to cover a burst water pipe with a band-aid. It's a temporary fix to a problem that isn't going anywhere. This creates an immediate sense of urgency that the developers obviously wanted to motivate you with throughout your victim experience. So that means no camping and just waiting for it all to blow over. You are tasked with escaping with your life, and you can do this by making it out of the house, into the front yard and just running off into the desert like a madman, or take one of the secret exits in the basement. These ones require special items like fuses, which you'll need to use on a fuse box somewhere in the map, play an amp matching mini game which opens up one of the locked doors, thus making these much more convoluted to open, but usually far more unexpected and safer from the killers. You're free to make your escape solo or team up with the other survivors and coordinate. You know, strength in numbers. Sadly though, this test didn't allow me to select which mic was being used and as a consequence I couldn't use voice chat. Probably nothing lost there as I didn't hear a single other player's voice throughout my time in the test. Maybe they were having similar issues, I don't know, or maybe people are just shy these days. I was hoping for some funny proxy chat moments but the game just doesn't feature it. It opts for a team chat system instead. I can understand why this decision was made, so that each team could focus on working together and strategizing, rather than holding their tongues for fear of the other team eavesdropping. But I can't help but feel like a proxy chat mode would allow some incredible content to be born though. Maybe there could in the future be a dedicated mode to that perhaps, if the player base was large enough to warrant splitting it. Regardless, I think strong teamwork will be the key to getting everyone out alive once the game's been out long enough for people to get really good at it. Especially if you're playing with a group of friends, you never leave a man behind. You'll spend a good portion of the early game getting lost in the basement while occasionally stopping to spend 2,000 years obtaining an unlock tool or a bone shard. The former used to get through certain doors and the latter used to cut things down, stab chickens or shank grandpa. The skill check mechanic is similar to Dead by Daylight when looking to get one of these. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're prompted to press a button to fill up a task completion gauge, while not allowing the adjacent noise gauge to fill and give away your position to the apex predator killer family members, who are desperately just looking for any leads to find out your location. I thought that searching for a tool or bone shard to be slightly too long at times, instead of increasing the drama of suspense, it aired slightly into tedium. You're not free to turn the camera to look around you while you're searching, which means from a gameplay perspective, just staring at a meter filling up extremely slowly with your camera locked in place, it can get a little annoying. 
I believe the camera lock is deliberate so you can't watch your own back, and instead you must use the visual and audio cues to know if a killer is about to ruin your day and jump scare you from your blind spot. There was one of the victims, I believe Connie, who could find these items much quicker, and also had an ability to speed up picking locks. This was a character specific perk, but it felt like a much better balance of tension and gameplay feedback. It's worth noting that the test didn't have the progression system available, so there may be unlockable perks that speed things up like searching for items and whatnot, so it's nothing major, we will just have to wait for future tests to try all that out. After you've found the tools you need to bust open a door or two, you will find yourself on the ground floor, with the outside seeming so close but so far, as more locked doors and the threat of the killers patrolling the area hinder you with some real IRL anxiety damage. When a killer is nearby, your screen will throb with an orange hue, which gets more intense the closer the killer is to you. I think this system is good for new players who need something other than audio to recognise when there's a killer around, but I would like to see a more hardcore mode where this isn't featured, where you need to just rely on spatial awareness and audio to know if your cheeks are about to get clapped by the killers. I think this would make the experience far more terrifying and quite intense, but I do also understand that it would raise the difficulty substantially. Inside the house you will have less darkness to hide in, but multiple ways to finesse the killers should they discover you. You can slip through gaps, jump out of windows, hide in cupboards, or crawl through vents. The developers give you ample ways to break line of sight from your aggressors and restart the game of cat and mouse. And hey, if things get really hairy, you can just jump down a well, land back in the basement to regroup, loot up, and try again. Once you've made it out of the house, there's only a few more obstacles between you and the open road of freedom. There's electric fences to disarm, car batteries to switch off, and the final locked gate to pick being the few I came across in the test. These are quite exciting moments, as by this point you've slipped the guard of the killers, who are usually still running around the house and basement looking for you, and with sweaty palms you're just moments from getting your ass out of dodge. The gameplay loop of the victims I found to actually be extremely enjoyable, and is by far like my preferred mode between the victims and the killers. I never really felt underpowered, in the sense that I could plan my escape routes, before attempting anything in plain sight of the family members who might see me, which lends credit to the design of the maps, there was always some way I could slip away and reset the chase, which I really liked. As this is a multiplayer game, the fear that you might get during a single player horror title isn't really present here, but it's certainly an adrenaline rush being chased that was quite addictive. I would imagine if I had more time to play, it would be rewarding to really master it too. And now onto the killers. When playing as one of the family members, it becomes apparent quite quickly that they are a lot more diverse than the victims straight off the bat. Despite the talent trees and perks not being available, these guys have different builds and sizes entirely. Unlike say Dead by Daylight, the killers are also in the third person perspective, so their field of view is the same as the victims, therefore much harder to exploit. Each killer has a different starting location across the map. For example, Leatherface always starts in the basement, the cook in the house, and the hitchhiker just outside the front. They also sport their own signature weapon from the movie. The hitchhiker has his pocket knife, the cook has a broken broom handle, and Leatherface is of course wielding the iconic chainsaw. They have two jobs. The primary one is to work together to find out where the victims are and murder them before they can escape. The second being, Grandpa is starving, and you must collectively feed him. But the thing is, he only eats blood. Grandpa is basically your fourth team member when playing as the killers. He's an NPC ally who periodically screams and reveals the location of the victims who were dumb enough or unfortunate enough to be moving during his call. Think of him as sort of a sonar UAV for the squad. Feeding him blood powers up his effectiveness from levels 1 to 5. You can obtain blood from buckets around the map or by landing attacks on victims. The latter fills up your blood reserve much quicker. When Grandpa reaches level 5, even players who aren't moving when he cries out will have their locations revealed regardless, making it much harder for them to waste any more time with their attempt of escape. I really like this idea, it's a great way to include the creepy, decrepit Grandpa from the movie, but the task of feeding him only really works if the team is dedicated to working together to do it. For example, I had a bunch of matches where I was basically the only one feeding him, and his level was increasing so slowly that it was just a waste of time, and not that fun to do. His ability to spot players when leveled up is such a powerful tool, I felt like it's quite important that it wasn't ignored. This won't really be a problem once everyone has learned the game more and realised this too, but as a solo player in the test, it was again quite frustrating. The most effective killer I found to be was unexpectedly the cook. He has an ability which allows you to locate players through walls. You have to track on-screen visual noise until it pings their location. As I couldn't speak to my team, I'm not really sure if I was the only one seeing the player's outline or if my whole team shared the intel, but I would imagine only I could see it and I would need to verbally communicate with my teammates to clue them in. 
But what was mad about this ability was that even after spotting a player helplessly getting lost in the basement, I was free to just hold the ability up and repeatedly spot them over and over again without waiting for a cooldown. Only releasing the right click would start the cooldown. And I did find this kind of wildly OP for a game so heavily reliant on stealth. I do wonder if this may need tweaking for the full release as I can see it being abused. He can also add and remove padlocks from doors, forcing the victims to need to use an unlock tool to get through. This is an invaluable asset as it wastes more time and resources from the victim's team, giving you more chance of catching them red-handed. Leatherface was good fun, being the most formidable and memorable character from the movie. He's like a tank holding a chainsaw, which you'll need to stop for a few seconds to rev up to get it ready to do some damage. This creates a good strategy of having the chainsaw turned off to be able to sneak up on a victim and only rev it up and chase them down when it's almost too late for them to avoid it. The hitchhiker I think was the weakest of the family in my experience. He can set traps and is more nimble than the other killers, allowing him to take some of the shortcuts the victims can and cut them off. I imagine he's going to be useful to funnel the victim players into the arms of the other more dangerous killers when played more competitively. Playing as the killers just didn't seem as engaging to me personally. It could be the fact that I was playing solo without any communication with my team, but I found the grandpa mechanic was just stopping me from hunting the other players for far too long and there were many instances of games dragging out a bit past their welcome because the victims weren't getting caught and they weren't escaping either. This is more likely to be a skill issue as if the team of killers are working together, coordinating their abilities and having solid map knowledge, it would make for quite a competitive challenge for the victims. Sadly I didn't get to experience this but if there are future tests I would like to be able to get some friends together and try this out myself. The game has been developed using Unreal Engine 4 and boasts some rather pleasant visuals. The environments are the real standout. A good use of lighting emphasizes the claustrophobic basements, where steam and dust particle effects are dimly illuminated by minimal light sources, which guide you to pathways you can take or items of interest. This is contrasted with the scorching Texas sun which greets you should you manage to find a way out to see it. The locations and attention to detail are impeccable here. The developers have really managed to bring this disgusting family house to life. There are human remains, blood and presumably decades worth of filth from wall to wall. The character models are passable, maybe lacking some more of the finer details like pores in the skin, realistic hair etc, but it's some stiff facial animation along with the jerky way that the characters turn when you're controlling them which hold the game back from immersing you with realism, as in this definitely feels like a video game rather than a cinematic experience. Especially coupled with the permanent on-screen UI displaying your character's unique abilities, health, stamina and items held. It's not a UI which has worked into the visual style, like how a game like Dead Space has all the information you need woven into the character. This isn't a negative unless you were really wanting something more hyper-realistic. I personally think it looks great, and as a multiplayer game it works well and isn't intrusive. But the devs really wanted to make sure that you know that the visuals and features are not final, with the watermarked notice at the bottom of the screen. This may be the smoothest test for an unfinished game I've ever played. This was a closed test, not a beta. For it to be running as smoothly as it did was just shockingly refreshing. Most full games releasing these days have more issues than this did. So I was extremely pleased to see my frame rate was always over 100 FPS and didn't have big enough fluctuations to be noticeable at all. I'm running a PC with an RTX 3090 Ti, a Ryzen 9 5950X with 32GB of RAM just for reference. The graphics options were not available to tinker with during this test, so I would imagine Imagine people trying the game on older hardware might have run into some issues getting the game to run as smoothly, but of course in future builds they should be able to optimise their settings to find a sweet spot for visuals and performance. I cannot speak for console performance as this was a PC only test. There were a few bugs that I encountered, such as at the start of each match the camera would flicker to the front of the house for a few frames and then snap back to where it should be behind my player model. I'm sure this will be a relatively easy fix for the devs to get ironed out. Another instance was when I got hit in the back by one of the killers when I was playing the victim just as I was escaping down a well. Here's what happened. Just a little minor hiccup there, and hey, it didn't even stop me from going on to escape that round either. But all the systems seemed to be functioning as intended, and although I didn't go out of my way to try and break the game, I didn't come across anything game-breaking in any of the games I played. If the full release irons out some of the minor bugs, this might be one of the most polished games to release this year. 
As a gamer who never really got into games like Dead by Daylight or the Friday the 13th game, I was pretty surprised that the gameplay loop of the victim held my attention so long. It has the frantic, anxious thrill of the chase when you've been spotted, often running into more than one killer at the same time, while also being quite clear which objects or paths you can interact with to be able to make quick decisions on the fly and potentially save your own skin. There will be a lot more fun to be had when playing the killers once people are using the voice chat and working together more. Sadly, I didn't experience in this test, and so my opinion of playing the family members will be a review in progress. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre game maybe has some tweaking to do with how long things take to execute, for example, to keep the pace engaging. But I think with all the skill trees to grind for and the cosmetics to unlock when the game launches, it really could be quite hooking. It also offers enough originality in the gameplay not to just be a Dead by Daylight clone like some people are fearful of. But one thing that Dead by Daylight may have the upper hand with, however, is its plethora of known licensed horror characters that it added over the years with the DLC packs. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre surely only has a limited pool of characters to choose from, and they won't be nearly as iconic as, say, Pyramid Head, Freddy Krueger, Leon Kennedy, and so on. Hell, even Leatherface himself was in it. I'm sure that Gun Interactive are aware of this, so it will be really interesting to see what they have up their sleeves to ensure that the gameplay remains engaging on the long term, or whether they can retain a loyal player base to turn this into a successful competitor in the space. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it guys, share it with your friends if you're feeling generous, subscribe if you want to see more from me, and I'll see ya when I'm looking at ya. Thank you for watching. And now off to try this new Amnesia game.